Welcome to Origin Art. This is our first uh, film. So we're going to show you the Origin Arts way. So this is the first step. So when you phone up to class, the first thing that most people do is say, what do I have to bring? So all you need to bring is a piece of paper and some pencils, a range of pencils, an HB pencil, some midway hard pencils, <laughs> <laughs> and then a midway soft pencil. <laughs> We've all got to learn somewhere. Okay, you may be tempted to use a really, really nasty pencil sharpener. However, <clears throat> you mustn't be tempted. That's why I've got these here. You need to use a Stanley knife. Okay, Stanley knife's really important. So you just sharpen your pencil like that, make sure you do it away from you. Health and safety standards are very important. Okay, have you got a vacuum cleaner for later? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you just sharpen your pencil, like so. And you go all the way around. Keep it a long, thin movement. Okay. Oh, make sure you miss your cup of tea. I did forget to point out that it is essential to have your cup of tea at hand and then just sharpen it off like so so that you've got a really really nice pinpoint tip at the end there right so it should end up looking beautiful like well, I'm going to put it on the white so you can see it can you see that I've got your pencil nice and sharp, okay. You need to do that with all of your pencils, obviously. The reason why we've got different pencils is we've got H pencils, which are hard pencils, okay. So quite often you'll find people like architects use those and they give you a very, very hard line. Um, soft pencils are B pencils. I don't know why they're called B pencils. And I can't think of a rhyme to go with. Okay, right, so <clears throat> getting on with the front bit, right. So you'll need a piece of paper. Any old piece of paper will do. You can get um, really cheap cartridge paper, which is quite nice because that has more of a texture to it. Just any old paper just to get started, all right. You'll also need something to draw, funnily enough. Um, when you come to an origin class, we always get you to draw an apple just because it's fun. Um, the first stage is to learn to use your pencil okay before we let you loose on the apple. i will have a number so you have a 6B pencil or you'll have the higher the number will indicate how soft the B pencil is so you need to take the highest number that you've got B pencil all right and what you're going to do <clears throat> is you want to get a range of tones you have to think about your um, your pencil almost like a voice it's almost like a whisper okay so you're just very gently tickling the surface of the page with your pencil there okay just like a whisper so you're doing that very very softly okay so you do that like that with just one layer the next one you're not going to press any harder you're simply going to do exactly the same thing again. Hold your pencil down low. A lot of people, when they think they're going to do art, get all artsy about it and start to use their pencil at the end, thinking that that looks all artistic. Don't. Hold your pencil down low because then you've got a lot more control over your pencil. Okay. And that way, with this finger, you're almost pushing up, up as much as you're pushing down with that finger. Okay. So you're just holding it very, very lightly and whispering onto the page. But this time, because you want to get it one stage darker, you're going to whisper over the top of it again. Okay? You're not pressing any harder. You're just going to whisper over it again. And can you see that it's getting slightly darker? Okay? But you've got absolute control of where that's going to go. Okay? And then you're going to do another little spot, and guess what? You're only going to whisper again. You see very, very lightly. 
and then you're going to do it again just with a little little whisper so that's two layers and then again and can you see that it's really building up to a nice dark stage right so by now you're probably getting a feel for what you're doing okay so that's a 6b pencil all right now you could keep going on and on and on until you've got like a whole row of um, how many shades dark you could go with that you could keep going okay and um, please do if you're feeling you know in the mood all right so then what I want you to do is pick up a 3b pencil and this time you're going to do exactly the same thing again you're going to just whisper onto the page but you may start to notice something slightly different what a lot of people tend to do <clears throat> when they first start off is almost like that when they were at school with their felt tips they tend to go like that with lines but if you go in little tiny circles like that it's much easier to pick up the grain of what's going on underneath okay and again you have a lot more control so just try and do this sort of circular movement rather than going in these lines all right so then we're going to go back to here and we're not going to press any harder when we go back into this but we do want it to go a little bit darker so we're just going to put another layer of whispers into it and then for our third one and one of the reasons that we teach this layering technique is because it's fundamental to all of your other mediums, to your watercolour, to your acrylic, whatever else you use, learning to layer like this is absolutely fundamental. So we've got one layer of whispers there. We want it to go darker, so we're going to put another layer in. And because we've got absolute control, we can put that next whisper on top. Okay, and again, you can keep going right on, but you just take note of how that felt, how that pencil felt different to this one, and the differences between the two, because you will feel some sort of differences. Right, so then, take your HB pencil, first layer, you might remember. Don't worry if you're not getting the hang of this. A lot of people, when they first start, will start really quite heavy like this and find it very, very hard to get this technique of whispering. Have a little practice if you're finding it really hard to get this technique of whispering. It will take a little while. Normally in classes we have about at least half a term before people really click with this idea of being able to get it light enough. Okay, so that's our first layer. I have to say it feels a bit scratchy this when I'm using it and then that's our second layer it catches quite a lot this when I'm using it that's the third layer there you go so what you'll find is a 6b pencil pencil <laughs> petal, 6B petal, a 6B pencil will become very, very soft. You'll get it that it can go like that, but you really can't go very, very pale with it. The palest you can go, as you can see, is like this. So, but you can't get the control over it to go really, you can't get it to whisper as much as you want it to do. But it will go very, very, very dark. An HB pencil, as I said when I was using it, it's very scratchy and it'll it'll be really sharp and you can make lovely straight lines with it and things. But you won't be able to use it to really shade and make nice, nice soft shapes out of it. Okay? So what we tend to do when we're sketching and when we're shading, etc., is use a middle, a middle pencil and that tends to be a 3B, a 2B, to be or not to be, or a 4B. It just depends on what sort of artist you end up being, what sort of person you are, as to which one of those three suits you best and you'll find that as you carry on and it's just practice that will teach you that. Okay, so I tend to be a 3B um, person so I always use a 3B pencil. So the other thing to bear in mind before you start your apple is that many people will go in 
once they've once they've dived into the exercise and they'll go right here's my apple I'm gonna draw it it's round okay all right so I couldn't draw an apple like that pound to a penny I'd get it wrong okay so when I'm drawing I give myself um, a bit of a chance okay so I use my whispers I mean that's why I've got a 3B pencil so I can give myself a bit of a chance of getting it right so I use these very short very light whispers of lines that means that if I suddenly go mad and decide to draw a banana it really doesn't matter because nobody's really going to bother and see it there's also no such thing really as a line if you look at the apple in front of you there is no black line on the edge of the apple and really as the artist you should be learning to shade up to that line to make that line appear